Hello everybody, welcome and welcome back. Today we are going to be doing something a little bit different. We're going to be trying out Niles Bat Challenge. So basically, there are five rules to this. Rule 1. Your deck has 56 basics and 4 deep cavern bats to start. You can add in any cards that you steal with your deep cavern bat to the deck. Rule 3. You can add basic lands of any type. Rule 4. Your deck always has to have your 4 deep cavern bats. And rule 5. Go until you win one game. Now, this might sound like an easy challenge, but you're stealing random cards from your opponent, so you don't get to really build your deck, you kind of get to build your deck from your opponent's deck. So, it is kind of up to chance what you get, but you do at least get some choices. I definitely recommend sticking around until the end of this to see how this deck changes and evolves over the course of our games because this was a crazy fun challenge. And if you guys are excited for the challenge, make sure to drop a like, leave a comment, and make sure you're subscribed if you aren't already as I'd really appreciate it. Still trying to get my channel partnered, and I'm down to the last stretch so any support is really appreciated. With all that said, let's hop onto the ladder and see how this does. Game 1 starts off with a bat in the opening 7, so it's a keep. It ends up stealing a pugnacious hammer skull, since I thought we'd get another dino and it has decent stats. We did not. The game ended, as you'd expect, with an attack for 17. The next game, our bat yoinks a fairy dream thief. This little 1-1 one -one for 1 is a recruit to keep an eye on. Liars are usually good. Game 2 sadly ends with some needling from our fairy foes. Game 3, we end up stealing a bloated contaminator. Great stats and proliferation could possibly come in handy. This game ends pretty quick, thankfully, with 11 poison. The following game grabs us an Opnixilis a great card to pressure the opponent's life total, as we fall to a flurry of hits from fairies, dwarves, and devils oh my. Game 5, we find a Mosswood Dread Knight, Golgari Beater, and personal favorite of mine. This round, we die to a house and its inhabitants as we move to Game 6, where we find an ivy, I guess? We get poisoned out fairly quick, and move on to the next game. Game 7, and our bat finds some rats. A blight belly rat, to be specific. This opponent managed to win with damage and poison counters, so hats off to them. Game 8 nets us one of the best finishers we could ask for, Avabruck Caretaker. This hexproof monster could possibly be our path to victory. Our next bat grabs Tishana's Tidebinder. A third top decked bat forces the opponent to use a soul partition to exile bat number two, as bat number three takes the same Tidebinder, but the second one we can add to our stolen deck. Bat number two slash number four yoinks and negate as we get destroyed by an army of fish. Game 9, our bat friend snags a Myrel Shield of Archive. She's an army in a can. Thankfully, we do find a second bat, but this one just takes an abrade. Game 10, as crazy as it seems, this game was super close. We lost by a single turn, thanks to a second wandering throw. Next game, we find some gruff triplets, another fun finisher. Opponent just sat there with lethal. I hit concede to save time. Our next bat ends up with a Neshoba Brawler, which should be fine in our five color pile. This player also sat there for a minute with lethal, so we concede again and move on. 
Game 12 unfortunately doesn't count as a win, but since we can see the hand, I'll take the Flesh Gorger to round out our top end. In game 13, we snag a venerated Rot Priest. As opponent decides they have better things to do. Another not winning, sadly. Next round finds us Frosca's Fall, an alright removal spell, as our toxic friend kicks us to our next game. In game 15, our faithful bat finds us a volcanic spite, a removal that can bottom our land from hand. Pretty awesome. Our next bat also snags the lightning strike. This game also ended up being pretty close, but we couldn't hold off the burn and tokens forever. The next game we find an Ozolith, or more specifically, Gozo. A great mana sink, and it can put counters on bats for a pretty fast clock. This opponent missed lethal with a post-combat Gozo, so we scoop and go to 17. After two mulligans, we end up with a keepable five. Two flyers and an Averbrook caretaker to guide us home as long as we draw some lands. We run 35 currently, so pretty good odds. We lead off with a dream thief who sees a land. Not the right color, but we'll keep it anyways. Here, our bat yoinks a jewel thief. It's a decent creature, and I'd add it to the deck for sure. Plus it'll keep them off their fight spell. We'll get in for one through the lag, and pass the turn. No land this turn, just burn we can't use, so we jam for two. Opponent ramps with a weather seed treaty, grabbing a basic forest, and they pass back to us. We thankfully grab a second forest off the top. We'll get in for two, and we will pass. Now we just need two more lands for the caretaker, doesn't matter the color. Down comes a reclusive taxidermist, followed by a conduit of worlds. Another island? That's fine, one more land. Against a mono green player like this, it should stay for the rest of the game. That's a big-ass dino with reach. <laughs> Not great. Now we see the prize fight, snipe my bat, and they get their thief back. Awesome, there's the sixth land. Let's drop the caretaker. And start cooking. No attack this turn, we'll just pass. Down comes a jewel thief. We can take four on the attack here. Now here we have a choice, we have the 7th land for the Gorger, 
or we can pass and Volcanic Spite a creature on their turn to flip it to nighttime. Since they're playing mono green, I'm gonna play a little bit greedy. I think we just pass here and go to nighttime. Let's go to combat, counter up, get in for five, and we can pass from there. Nighttime falls, and they play a tribute to the world tree. It's a pretty decent card, but it won't do them anything this turn. I ended up being a little too excited to attack and get my counters this turn. We go to combat and miss out on some counters on the flash quarter. Even so, let's swing all. And we can try and force some bad blocks here. The titanic growth on their Colossodactyl means that it can eat the 7-7 Dream Thief. Volcanic Spite ends up saving us here, so things work out thankfully. We draw an extra card from the Thief, one last parting gift, a negate, just in case. Now we can drop our Flesh Gorger, counter up, and crack in for 10. Nissa does draw them a card, and it does let them double spell. They pass, and it goes back to daytime. Let's make them sacrifice a creature. That will clear up blocks and leave no chance for a profitable trade. I just forgot to use my negate here. I don't know. I just hit the space bar. Oops. A bat off the top lets us confirm that it is a land in hand. Moving to combat, we drop our last counters and swing for 21 and the game. I honestly can't believe we got there in the end. This was one of the most ridiculous things I've done on Arena. <laughs> And this is what the deck looked like after the challenge was completed. We had 35 lands in the deck, so 25 non-land spells. We definitely had some goofy stuff, like Avabrock Caretaker and Gruff Triplets. Ivy, not really something I use too much. Tide Tidebinder came up a couple times, just in games that got cut. Uh, Bloated Contaminator was good, Hammer Skull was pretty terrible since we didn't end up with a single other dinosaur. The Fairy Dream Thief and the Deep Cavern Bats, they really went the mile though. But uh, yeah, I had a ton of fun playing this challenge, and if you guys have any more challenges, 
uh, drop them down in the comments below. And I should be back to a more regular upload schedule after the next set comes out. But with all that said, thank you everybody for watching, I appreciate it. Like, comment, subscribe, and I will catch you in the next one. Peace.